Hi, this is J.T. Lee. This talk was presented at uh, 2011 PICCON. The title of the talk is HPLC in Antimeric Separations of Pharmaceuticals Using Polar Organic Mobile Phases. I will start with the background on this terminology, the polar organic solvents. And I mentioned the major benefits and talk about chiral mechanisms and I focus on the chiral valent V2 and an OD column for comparison and how would they convert into LC mass spec applications and I'll explore some variables for optimization and I'm going to show you a screen uh, result on a list of 26 pharmaceuticals showing the complementary effects between the chiral valent V2 and uh, an OD column, and I will summarize the result and draw some conclusions. Total organic mold started in early 1990s on cyclobound chiral stationary phases from Professional Armstrong's group. The typical mobile phase is 95, 5.3.2 acetonitrile, methanol, acetic acid, and TEA. As you can see, the acetonitrile is a dominant solvent. Acid base here are to suppress ionization. Samples must have at least two hydrogen bonds to work well. And over time, other chiral stationary phases start picking up this type of mobile phase. Depending on the polarity of the chiral stationary phases, mixing a polar solvent of methanol, ethanol, acetonitrile, etc., can be adjusted accordingly. On the bottom, the polar argument is exclusively for carobiotics only. As you can see, the mobile phase is 100% methanol with 0 0.1, 0 0.1 acetic acid and TEA. So the methanol is a dominant solvent. Chiral stationary phases have ionic characters in this case. Acid-based additives promote ionic interactions for ionizable samples. This slide shows three major benefits of using polar phase, mobile phases. Selectivity, sensitivity, and solubility. First of all, selectivity. Conformational changes of chiral stationary phases can induce different selectivity with different mechanisms. Secondly, compared to normal phase, polar organic phase has lower UV background and it also can be LC mass spec compatible for biological samples. And lastly, polar organic phase has higher solubility for the sample and also is easier for scale up purposes. The following three slides will talk about mechanism on each different type of uh, chiral stationary phases. This one is mechanism one. Uh, let's talk about cyclobank. On the top, this shows the structure of cyclodextrins with six, seven, and eight membranes. They called alpha, beta, and gamma respectively. As you can see, the, the beta cyclodextrin is the most useful one. On the bottom, it shows the 3D view of a molecule interacting with the beta cyclodextrin. On the lab, it shows the reverse phase mode. The most phytophobic portion of the molecule will form an inclusion complex with the cyclodextrin cavities. That's the typical inclusion com complexation for the reverse phase. On the right, it shows the um, polar organic mode. As you can see here, Acetyl nitrile occupies the cavity, so the chiral molecule lies across the surface and to interact with the upper ring of the cyclodextrin ring. So in this case, it is all surface interactions. Mechanism 2, chirobiotic columns. Microcyclic glycopeptides provide a multimodal chiral surface in capable of a wide variety of different interactions. The subtle differences between them provide different dominant retention mechanisms that lead to inadumentary recognition. Among these mechanisms, ionic interactions dominate for ionizable molecules. 
they are a family of six columns so far. On the right, vancomycin is shown here. All interaction possible are within the molecule. As you can see, there are two ionic size peptide chains for hydrogen bond and dipole interactions. Pi pi on the bending rings, and there are ABC cavity for sterile interactions. And most importantly, the uh, carboxyl group on the right side is responsible for all the basic molecule separation under the right condition. Mechanism three, cellulose DMP. Cellulose is a linear polymer of D-glucose linked by beta-1,4 glycosidic bonds with several hundreds to over 10,000 units. Unlike cyclodextrin, cellulose needs to be derivatized to work well in the chiral HPLC. As you can see from the right side, after derivatization, you can see carbamate groups provide strong hydrogen bond and the dipole stacking, and phenyl group provide pi pi interaction. Most of, more polymer backbones, they are groups, pockets in between glucose units. They can provide sterile interactions. The story begins with this chiral warfarin separation from normal phase to polar organic phase using different types of additives. The first one is normal phase shows the best selectivity, but the peak two is very broad. So I switch to 100% methanol with TFA additive. The result is better, but not good enough. The third one, when I use DEA to replace TFA, there's no retention or selectivity at all. Then I switch to ammonium format. You can see it shows almost baseline. And then I switch to typical polo ionic mode for the carobiotic. Here, the acid base is 2 to 1 ratio. You can see it gives the best result of all five cases. This slide shows the three types of separations on warfarin from cyclobound to carobiotic V to cellulose DMP using three kinds of different mobile phase type. In all cases, s phone eludes later, and this is preferred for trace analysis. Overall, the Aztec cellulose DMP shows the best result. This slide shows the separation comparisons on my answering. The first two chromatograms shows the normal phase and the polar organic phase separation using cellulose DMP column. The bottom one shows exactly the same mobile phase as the polar organic phase on the cellulose, that what we call polar ionic mole, and it gives the best result. In all cases, s form elude later and that is preferred for trace analysis. And remember, this pin-pong mobile phase are good for LC mass spec applications, too. Another example on the trogo space. Again, normal phase and polar organic phase work on the cellulose DMP column, but not the carobody V2 on the polar animal. This slide shows examples of good separation in polar organic mold with 100% methanol and DEA as an additive on cellulose DMP. They are all diverse basic molecules. As you can see, they all separate very well. Those separations seen on the previous slide can be successfully converted to LC mass spec applications by using ammonium format as an additive. As you can see, the separation is not compromised. This slide shows three examples of 
of good separation using a 100% acetonitrile instead of methanol. As you can see here, there's no additives needed. This slide shows the reproducibility test between normal phase and polar organic phase. From the values of efficiency, selectivity, and resolution, as you can see, they are very similar before and after. It requires only 20 to 30 column volumes of IPA washing and the subsequent mobile phase conditioning between changes. In the following three slides, there will be uh, optimization steps for you to follow. The first one, it shows the effect of ethanol and base ratio. As you can see from this slide, the first chromatogram has the 5 to 1 ratio. The second one is 2 to 1 ratio, and the third one is 1 to 1 ratio. So the acid-base ratio can affect the selectivity and retention significantly. Example here are also LC mass spec compatible too. Optimization number two with the salt effect. Uh, ammonia and salt can be used also for optimizations. The first one shows ammonia acetate. There's no retention, no separation at all. Second one is the ammonium format, shows some uh, partial separation. The best one is on, on the last one, using ammonium trifluoroacetate. It gives uh, adequate separation within five minutes. Optimization number three, the solvent effect on the polysaccharides column. As you can see, the solvent polarity dictates the selectivity on cellulosic phases here. There is dramatic difference between methanol and acetonitrile on the ketoconazole sample. This slide shows the screen result of 26 basic drugs in an alphabetical order. A normal phase polar organic phase on cellulose, DMP, and polar animal on chiroboli V2. The data of, of K prime and the selectivity was shown. The best result of three runs were in red color. Continue from the previous slide. This is just from blind screens. A better result can be obtained through optimization. So there are 20 out of 26 samples showed better result on the polo animal, polo animal. So as you also can see, cellulose DMP and carbon V2 are very complementary. Together, 22 out of 26 showed baseline separation already in this blind screen. Let's summarize uh, the, the result here. Microcyclic glycopeptide and polysaccharide color station phases can be complementary to one another using polar organic mobile phases. And besides normal phase screen, a second screen system was suggested here using other popular color station phases like uh, carbide V2, carbide T, ODAD type color, and other. Uh, commercially available stationary phases. Together, they may increase your success rate up to 95%. In conclusion, polo organic mobile phases provide additional opportunities for chiral selectivity should other types of mobile phases fail. PIM and POM provide easy sample preparation for polar ionizable compounds. There is no memory effect going from normal phase to polar organic phase and, and vice versa. The mobile phase can be mass spec compatible for polar organic mode. Since the solubility is high, the scale up is very easy for prep purification. And lastly, 
the optimization step is very, are very straightforward.